Deserts of North America The hottest, driest, lowest desert in the United States is the Mojave Desert located mainly in southeastern California and southern Nevada. It is one of three hot deserts running along the western side of North America. Bounded by mountains on the east and west, the Mojave has two rivers winding their way through the region and drying out into salt flats. Water flowing down from the mountains can create temporary lakes, but these soon evaporate in the dry heat. The desert basin is covered mainly with low shrubs, but as the basin slopes upward to the mountains, there appears the plant most associated with the Mojave the Joshua tree. The Joshua tree is actually a type of yucca, a member of the lily family. It grows 20 to 30 feet high and serves as a home or lookout post for many species of birds, such as the ladder-backed woodpecker, the screech owl, and the sparrowhawk. The most famous region of the Mojave is Death Valley, a low spot 130 miles long and ranging from 6 to 14 miles wide. Death Valley was formed when a block of earth dropped down between two fault lines. Death Valley has the lowest elevation in the Western Hemisphere 282 feet below sea level. It is also the driest place in the United States, receiving less than 2 inches of rain per year. Death Valley also boasts a record temperature, even higher than its usual summer highs of 125 degrees Fahrenheit. On July 10, 1913, the temperature reached an all-time high for the United States 134 degrees Fahrenheit. Death Valley was once a busy area. In the 1800s, borax, a mineral salt with many industrial uses, was mined in Death Valley. Covered wagons carried workers and resources in and out of the desert. Today, Death Valley is a national park. In the last century, if you were a settler or a gold hunter traveling the southern route to California, you would cross the Sonoran Desert in Arizona. The trail across the desert is a 200-mile stretch that earned the name Devil's Highway. Why such a grim name? This bleak land has only one dependable water source. Coyotes and wild burrows and Gila monsters roam the dusty land, and the area is crusted with black lava rock. Travelers in the 1800s could not avoid seeing makeshift crosses dotting the trail, grave markers of the many travelers who perished along the way. In 1905, W.J. McGee, an editor for the National Geographic Society, set up a research station at the one place with water to study the plants and animals of the region. Later he wrote of his encounter with two travelers who had miraculously survived the deadly desert. McGee met gold prospectors Pablo Valencia and his partner as they passed along the trail and invited them to spend the night at his camp. McGee described Valencia as having a remarkably fine and vigorous physique. Eight days later, McGee was awakened in the early morning by a piercing, agonized scream. In a nearby canyon, McGee and his assistant discovered Pablo Valencia. McGee was shocked. In just eight days, Valencia's body had shrunk until his ribs reached out like those of a starving horse. His joints and bones stood out and the skin clung to them in a way suggesting shrunken rawhide. They poured water over Valencia's body and down his throat, but Valencia could not talk or even swallow. Valencia had been separated from his partner, who was with the horses and supplies. Valencia was left in the desert with only one canteen of water. He had wandered in circles through the desert, lost and disoriented from thirst. By the seventh day he had lost forty pounds, he could not focus his eyes, and his tongue was black and shrunken like leather. He lay down in a gully, convinced that he was going to die there. But he let out one last howl, the cry that brought McGee to his rescue. Valencia survived his terrible ordeal. But it is chilling story of what the desert can do to a person. Even today, travelers are warned to take extra water in their cars and check their gas tanks before crossing the desert. To the south and east of the Sonoran Desert lies the Chihuahua Desert. Most of this desert sits on a plateau in Mexico, between two ranges of mountains. It also stretches into Texas and New Mexico. 
the desert has few sand dunes. The most notable are the White Sand Dunes at White Sands National Monument in New Mexico. The area is so desolate that the United States military used part of White Sands as a testing range for bombs and missiles. The desert plateau in Mexico receives varying amounts of rainfall, depending on variations in elevation. Rain comes mainly in the form of brief, violent thunderstorms. Average rainfall is only about 8 inches a year, although the higher elevations may receive more. Temperatures vary according to elevation, but most of the desert has cool to cold winters and hot summers.